Hey, hello everybody. I'm excited to be here and talk about the stablecoin trilemma and how to overcome it. I'm Robert Lau, co-founder and head of research at Liquity. So first of all, what is the stablecoin trilemma all about? Maybe you're familiar with the fact that stablecoins usually have to pick two out of three desirable properties, um, decentralization, stability, and scalability. For example, LUSD, our own stablecoin, is very decentralized and it's stable, but it's not really scalable. Um, Makers die used to be uh, similar, but they uh, decided to integrate with centralized assets, so they became uh, more scalable but less decentralized. And then there are also other stablecoins, like the algorithmic ones, which have tried to be scalable, but they unfortunately failed, ended up in um, downward spirals. But let me first outline the issues with the current state of uh, borrowing-based or CDP-based stablecoins. The problem there is uh, um, a lack of scalability, and uh, that's due to the fact that the, um, the demand is kind of, or, or the way of minting the stablecoin is constrained by the demand for loans against the collateral. And this usually also leads to a softer peg, like um, the stablecoin becomes less stable, and also liquidity uh, on DEXs becomes a big issue because normally you would need to kind of pay out a lot of incentives to have liquid secondary markets. Now there is a novel, a newer approach, I call it a decentralized reserve, which is less well known, I would say. Um, the idea there is that um, instead of having individual positions, you have a protocol-owned reserve, which is still backed by some reserve asset, let's say Ether, like some native asset of the chain. And there the idea is that you can always mint and redeem the stable coin, basically at face value, like as if it was always worth $1. And this usually means that you can orbit whenever it's above or below peg, so it means a stronger peg. And also you have solved the problem of liquidity because the protocol itself is now acting as a primary AMM. This all sounds nice in theory, but the problem here is that now the protocol takes on all the volatility um, that comes from the volatile uh, reserve asset. And that's why uh, those existing approaches have been um, uh, kind of struggling with the fact that they weren't really able to hedge uh, their reserves against those price volatility risks. So they turned out to be not so robust, at least in difficult market situations. Um, there are two approaches, uh, by the way, which uh, I would say um, people have tried in this, under this decentralized reserve um, idea. One is a recapitalization by inflation where you have a reserve asset and a stable coin as a li liability of the system, but you also have a third token, which is a protocol kind of native token, which can be minted, like inflated in supply, in order to um, kind of let people deposit more reserve asset. Like the system means the recapitalization token in exchange for more of the reserve asset, let's say Ether. So the system tries to maintain like a surplus so that it can always buy back the stable coin. On the other hand, you see another approach, I call it delta neutral hedging, which is more, um, let's say, based upon traditional ideas, where you try to um, hedge the reserve and its volatile asset against price movements by issuing um, some derivatives, like, let's say, perpetual futures, where now people um, who buy those futures, they would normally go long or leverage long on the, the reserve asset, and the protocol can then use this extra um, fund to kind of uh, back its stablecoin. Um, so there have been a few um, protocols uh, that have tried both of those ideas. Unfortunately, they all have their challenges because with this recapitalization through inflation, you have the problem that you normally need a very high collateral ratio because the risk is still very high. So JET, for example, went for 400 to 800 percent. They are pretty capital efficient by design. On the other hand, the delta neutral hedging approach uh, has another issue, like first of all, some of them are not really decentralized because they are using centralized markets um, to uh, buy short or to open short positions. And there are others like Angle which try to incorporate um, the futures market in their own native protocol, but um, it also turned out to be quite difficult in practice. So both of those approaches basically yeah, have, have, proved, like, have failed, like I would say, like, or at least some of them ended up in, in dead spirals. Um, and the, most of the delta neutral uh, protocols, they ended up pivoting to some other 
um, designs because they, they just realized that the hedging costs or the funding payments that they needed to pay um, to attract more capital, they just turned out to be not sustainable. But I still think, or we at Liquidity think, that we can solve this problem or we can take this idea of delta neutral hedging to the next level. And here the challenge is really like under difficult market situations, there's just not enough demand for leverage, which means a higher hedging costs in the end, which is then normally um, kind of shouldered by the protocol, which needs to pay out some form of incentives. So the costs of the protocol can be very high. We need to cut down on those costs. How can we do that? Um, we have looked at a few ideas like using protocol revenue fees, for example, to finance the costs or even dilute existing users um, to incentivize new like capital inflow. But this is also not really sustainable. But then kind of we came up with a new idea, which is really about how to make this hedging product or this leveraged position more attractive in the first place. Yeah, and here there are two innovations we kind of came up with. On the user's end, um, the main idea is that we make the product, the leveraged product, more attractive by adding principal protection so that your losses will be kept in a downturn. And on the other hand, the protocol can also reduce its costs by a very neat way of integrating a secondary market into the prime system, which means then less strain on the system uh, overall. And another, um, you know, another idea here is that we make it so that this principal protected product is perpetual, which means you just uh, create it, it's set and forget, there is no liquidation. You can just uh, become a hedger of the system and do not have to worry about it too much. But what is it now really um, in practice? What is it about? Um, so when somebody opens uh, such a hedging position, let's say um, a position of size 10, or 10 ETH, uh, then it means that whenever the ETH price goes up, the protocol can take out money from its reserve because it doesn't need all of its reserve to back the stable coin. So it can kind of um, increase the value of the hedging position. So let's say here when ETH price doubles, maybe your hedging position now becomes uh, worth 40 ETH. On the other hand, when ETH plummets, then there is a new um, principle protection here that makes it so that you can always get back 10 ETH from the system. So it's kind of asymmetric on the upside. And that's very nice because now if you think about it, you have a position that can go up, but not really go down, at least in ETH terms, then it means that it's kind of worth more than 10 ETH. Its fair price should be worth more than 10 ETH. And this also means now that users should be willing uh, to accept a premium in addition to the principal. Like they would pay more than this 10 ETH. Maybe they would pay 12 or 14 ETH uh, to open such a position. That's the price of this principal protection, like an insurance premium. And the system itself can now collect those uh, premiums in order to finance the protection later on when needed. And when it is really needed, that's interesting because um, normally, when a position goes down, like now it's in the red, it still means that its fair market value should be higher than the payoff. Like, there is still maybe some uh, downside priced in, so only very rarely when the markets plummet really badly would you uh, want to claim your principal. Otherwise, you would rather sell it on the principal, uh, sell it on the secondary market for more than its principal. But there is still a problem with this approach, and that's uh, the fact that um, now the system is like an insurance company. It needs to protect a lot of principles or a lot of uh, positions. And if everybody comes and wants to claim their principle at the same time, this may lead to like a bank run situation. So um, the problem here is that the liability is not constrained. It can be higher than the collected premium. So how can we solve this? So here, th this next innovation is about how to minimize this liability stemming from the principal protection. And we do that by incorporating a secondary market uh, in a very special way. And the idea here is that when somebody wants to kind of claim their principal, yes, then they would, want to, that they would try to sell their position on the secondary market. And the system would kind of detect if the person who is selling a position for, let's say, 10 ETH, the principal, if this person is not able to sell it within a certain amount of time, like there's a timeout period, 
then the system would step in and subsidize the sale. It would do that by boosting kind of the inner value of this position gradually over time, a bit like in, a, in an auction, until somebody comes and buys the position for the principal, like 10 years. And this has very nice uh, consequences or properties because uh, it turns out the system only needs to subsidize a, sp a subset of all the positions, like uh, only uh, those that are really deep in the red, while um, most other um, positions they don't need subsidies because they can be sold on the secondary market as is without extra boost. And out of those that need to be subsidized, uh, they only need to be subsidized up to a certain level uh, until they are bought. So it means in the end that the system only needs to pay out a fraction of a fraction of the total, uh, of the total principles from all positions. This is a very nice property because now we can really reduce uh, the total liability of the system. Another interesting fact is that the subsidies, they are not really paid out, um, but they are just repurposed, like it's like a value repurposed inside the system, so the, the protocol doesn't leak value. So the value is kept in the system, just moved from the, this kind of collected premium pool to the position that needs a subsidy. So can we crack the stablecoin trilemma? I think we can by first building upon this idea of delta neutral hedging, then adding principal protection as the main ingredient to make the positions more attractive in the first place, and lastly, by introducing this secondary market as a mechanism that allows the system to reduce its liability from the principal protection it offers. So um, we are now in a phase where we want to open up our research we will put out some more information about our project and we would love to get you involved. I mean, we'd love to hear your insights, criticisms, reactions about the new project and product and also see whether we can take it to a next level. So um, please uh, check out the latest information on Twitter or even better, uh, scan this QR code uh, and then become a part of our Discord channel. Um, there is also a community session sometime in August, so watch out for an announcement. It seems I have two minutes left, so maybe if somebody has questions, I'm happy to take them. Any there? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, cool. So, uh, Servi USD recently released. I don't know, it's my phone maybe. So Curve recently released CRV USD with this dynamic uh, CDP adjustments based on the you know, market um, conditions of the, of, of the collateral. Do you guys have any plans to do something similar with liquidity? Thank you. Uh, that's a great question. So first of all, this uh, implies some form of borrowing. Uh, that was not part of my presentation here, but that's also something we want to include in addition to this reserve-based uh, kind of mechanism that means the stablecoin, we also want to offer borrowing. And there, um, we haven't been thinking about including something like this. I guess there are other, you know, third-party apps, for example, DeFi Saver, that can kind of deleverage your position when needed or leverage it up. So I think you can reach a similar uh, result in the end by using those third-party apps. But it's something we can look into, I mean, to take also to make borrowing more, more attractive, at least for some users. No more questions? <laughs> Does V2 include governance to add new stake ETH assets, or is it similar to V1? Ideally, uh, it should be similar to V1. No, no. Um, yeah, I mean, we want to stick to this uh, yeah, immutability, uh, but yeah, let's see. I mean, we are open to discuss everything with our community. Thank you.